Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dave Berg. I'm Dean of Students at, at Johnson State College. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with, with students within the VSC for the past 16 years in various capacities. I have the privilege of advising a group called the Vermont State College Student Association, um, which is made up of student representatives from across all of our and your campuses and, and centers. And one thing that I learned long ago and that I'm sure that you've all learned as well over your time working with students is that the image of the typical college student as presented in popular media and popular culture uh, is not the typical college student. And that in fact, you know, we've seen for years within the VSC the number of our students who are the first in their families to go to college or who are uh, working part-time and some, in some cases being a, a parent full-time while attending classes. Uh, more recently, we, we've experienced an influx of students who are veterans, combat veterans, most recently from Afghanistan and Iraq, who are coming to our campuses to, to complete or initiate the, their educations. Uh, we've seen more of, as Tim just mentioned, the multi-institution attendees, students who might be on their second or third, or in some cases even fourth or fifth uh, college when they, when they come to us. So what we've attempted to do today is to assemble a, a panel that really represents to the best that we can this, uh, this uh, in, in kind of cumulative form, the, the typical VSC student. And none of these folks are typical. And, and I think that's, that's really the point. Um, what we're gonna do in terms of our format, we're gonna hear from each of these students. We're gonna let them introduce themselves. Um, I'm gonna lead it with a few questions. And I, by the way, just met these folks other than Alex, who I knew through the VSCSA, I, I met with these folks over lunch for the first time. So I'm using a decidedly low-tech tool uh, to help me with this. There's still a place for, for these things in the, in the world. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed the, the chance to catch up with these students over lunch, learn a little bit about their stories. I think you will as well and find them to be very informative. And um, so with that, why don't we go right down the, the aisle. We can start with Alex at the end have folks give a brief introduction of themselves. Um, I'm going to, as I say, lead with a few questions. Our hope is to open this up then uh, so that you all can, can get some insight from these students. Okay. Hello. Uh, I was hoping not to start uh, first, but hey, that's how it happens. Um, so my name is Alexander Gay. Uh, I just graduated here with a diesel degree. Uh, I was here for two years. Uh, I'm from Ashby, Massachusetts, which is near uh, Fitchburg. I don't know if anyone knows where that is. Um, I started out in, uh, you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> I get a little bit nervous. Um, when I was in high school, I went to a vocational school. Um, it was probably the second best in Massachusetts and did four years in automotive. Um, that was always my passion because I did mechanical stuff with my grandfather and my father and, you know, wanted to pursue that going into college. Um, I was somebody who struggled in school and was told um, never to use the word I can't do something. So by the time I hit high school, I found my niche and something I really enjoyed and it just accelerated after that. Um, and because of that, I am a huge planner and um, I plan way too far in advance. And going through college, I've learned that, you know, those kind of change because I found out that I don't want to be a mechanic for the rest of my life at all. I actually see myself owning a campground at some point because I like hospitality and be not have to travel to work because right now I travel an hour to work. Um, but I, uh, I met with uh, the technician recruiter for Milton Cat, which is Caterpillar Heavy Equipment, and he lined me up uh, to go here because it has an associate's degree and, and he likes to hire associate's degrees and there's not a lot in Massachusetts, and I like nature, and I can have a snowmobile on campus, which I love. Um, but, yeah. Um, so when I did that, he hooked me up with an internship, and I'm also doing another internship at the same place this summer before I head to Germany for 11 months in August with a government program that I applied for. Um, it's two months of language training, three months at a university, and a five-month internship. Um, I think in s I love traveling because my parents have always instilled that in me. But with this program, it's, uh, you know, 
you have to roll with the flow. I have no idea where I'll be or how to plan for my parents to see me during Christmas time because mom's already wants to go over there, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but I think because I was taught to not say I can't, I'm taking on something that uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm extremely nervous. I don't speak any German. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Um, but I think that's pretty much it for my... My background. I have. A, I could talk for hours, but that's that's all I got. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kelly Ross. Uh, I'm a graduate of CCV and Johnson as of Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually have been a resident here at, at uh, Randolph Center f for about 20 years. Um, I'm an older, non-traditional adult student who did not decide to go to college after high school. And I graduated in 1980, miserable grades, decided I was going to go to work, buy a car, and go travel and just live life for a while. My first college experience was in 1991 at SUNY Binghamton at Broome Community. I took an English comp course because I wanted to see what college was like and if I could actually pull a grade. And I came away with it with a B. Ended up in New York for a while and moved home back in 93 here to Vermont. And went to Lebanon College from 95 to 2003 through my employer, which um, paid for our college education at the time. However, my father passed away in 03, so I stopped going to school for a while and just continued work. And in 2010, after a 15-year tenure with my former company, my job was outsourced to Germany. So I went to the New Hampshire Unemployment Office, found out that I could live off my severance for a while. I qualified for a Federal Trade Act program. And with the help of my family and friends, I was able to pursue my CCB degree and took the APL course first, was able to kill a year off of school, um, didn't have to worry about any finances with the family, and I had enough credits that I was able to go in and do my Johnson degree, which my federal program just paid for. So I walk away from it without any student loans. Um, what I'm going to do when I grow up, um, that's to be debated. I just signed up for a four-week course at UVM as of Monday. Um, I will be doing another CCV course in another month. Um, I'm hoping to put my business and environmental degree to use somewhere here within the state. Um, I have a passion for learning. I can't say enough about my experience with the VSC. It's been incredible. I've had some wonderful advisors, extraordinary instructors, made a lot of friends, both older and younger, have enjoyed it immensely. And um, from there, I'll just move forward and see where I end up. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christina Ledoux. Um, I was informed recently that I was the first graduate of CCV doing completely online courses. Um, I'm currently with Johnson. I went on to the ADP program. Um, I was similar. I didn't go to college after high school. I wanted to take a year off. My parents didn't approve, so there went my college funds. So being this stubborn child that I was, I did not go, but I wasn't ready. But I wouldn't change that. Um, I have four kids. Um, I'm married. My oldest child and my husband both have high-functioning autism. Um, I've worked with kids in daycare centers and teaching preschool for the past probably 12 years now. I keep saying 10, but years keep getting added on. It makes me feel older, so I usually stick with 10. And I kind of found after a while that I was kind of stuck because I was training my bosses after a while. I had the experience, but I didn't have that piece of paper. And they were getting paid more than me, but I had to train them because they didn't know what they were doing. And so I decided to start with CCV to get my early childhood education degree. And then if I made it through that, I was going to go through Johnson. I'll graduate in December with my bachelor's in elementary education. And flexibility was just a huge part of me being able to go to college. I'm the only income for my family of six because it's really difficult for my husband to be able to find a job. And without being able to do the online courses like I did, I never would have been able to go. Hi there, my name is Roy, oh, Roy Fetters. 
Um, I am now a senior at Castleton State College. Um, my first, I guess, showing of interest in college was in high school with my VSAT counselor, encouraged me. She really wanted me to go to college and really pushed me to do it. But after I graduated, I really, really didn't want to do school. I was one of those kids that didn't really skip school, didn't go to class, didn't really care. Still kind of am, but I'm, I'm better at it now. <laughs> but after, like most of us, after high school, I decided to take a few years off. I worked full time. I, t I was part time at CCB for a while, but I was mainly working like 50, 60 hours a week at a restaurant, making some good money, but I was very unhappy with where I was. So I talked to another VSAC counselor, and they really, she really helped me get into a college. She helped me find ways to pay for it, find ways to get support, and find ways to get into a college, and I did, so that's pretty cool. Um, once I got to college, it was a very different experience from working 50, 60 hours at a restaurant to sitting around all day and telling, be encouraged to drink and not do anything, so. Mm. That changed quickly though and I found different people to hang out with and school got better, so. I mean, I come from a very, very poor family. It's just my mom, my sister, and me. And my sister went to four years at uh, Champlain. She was very, very smart, A pluses, graduated. Great girl. But I had a harder time just because I didn't really care in high school and it really helped, really hurt me trying to get into a lot of colleges, so. I am here now, so I'm doing better, so that's good. <laughs> well, let me just say a brief word about our one panelist who unfortunately had a conflict and, and couldn't be here today because it speaks to the, the full demographic picture we are trying to uh, put together, and that's Kyle Larkin from, from Linden State who uh, has returned in his, as a veteran, is a student at Linden, and I believe Linden's at least his fourth or fifth, maybe sixth. Mm -hmm college, so not, uh, not the only panelist with multiple institutions in his background. So, so here you have it, a, a group of students that, that really, uh, I think, challenge a lot of our assumptions. If I can share this joke from, from lunch, they also challenge some of our use of lingo because I promised them <laughs> I would start them off with a softball question and I got these panicked, concerned looks and they acknowledged they didn't know a lot about softball. So, uh, <laughs> so um, a little bit, right? <laughs> so that being said, uh, I will start with the, the, the most basic uh, question to get us rolling and then have a few follow-ups. And as I say, we'll try to open this up and, and get to your questions. But uh, all these students here have either just uh, graduated, as they said, or are going into their, their senior year. So by any definition, are, are successful. And so just as, a, as an initial prompt question, would love to hear from each of you uh, what you feel has made your college experience successful. Um, so, I don't know what I would have done going through college and school without my parents. I get emotional when I speak too, so, no. So, but uh, I struggled through school and uh, you know, with my parents and my drive. Um, I was the... I started school and uh, kind of worried too much about the little things and started to relax and really enjoy school. And uh, the year, last year, I just um, was the president of uh, student council here at Vermont Tech. Um, thanks. Um, so when I go around and look at other students, there's a lot of students who don't break out and actually go and take the things that are there and grab them and run with them. Um, I am a person who just doesn't, I don't just sit there. I, I'm kind of an intense person and I, I go after things. Um, so I think in a lot of ways, you know, my parents, my drive was the biggest reason and uh, that brought me through college. I've had, made, made some great people. My, the faculty, um, my teachers have really supported me. Um, sometimes when uh, you look for resources, you come across people who aren't so helpful, who think that, you know, that we are young adults and have entered college and think that we have all the answers, but we don't in no way, shape, or form. I wish in some ways that people understood that and were a little bit more open, especially with like the first year, uh, the in first, year, first generation college students who have no experience with it. 
I, I don't know if I had, didn't have the support of my parents, I would have made a lot of mistakes um, and probably would have cost me a lot of money too. Um, so, um, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but that's pretty, pretty much it. My, my family, the staff, faculty, and I, finding the people who, you know, some people you'll hit um, a wall with getting help, but you just need to go forward and find the right people. And sometimes I just go right to the top because I don't like to wait for things. Um, I, I'm from Massachusetts, so I'm a little high strung too. So you know, we kind of we kind of do that. Um, so yeah, I guess my own personal drive has been the biggest thing that's pushed me forward and finding the right connections. Well, I'd have to agree with you. Um, it has to be your own personal drive because I'm an older adult student going to school um, and come from a military background. Everybody said, you need to be able to ask questions. Don't be afraid to put your best foot forward. Um, if you don't know something, go find out an answer. Use the resources out there that are available to you within your degree program, whatever college you're going to within the VSC, no matter if you continue on later on. Um, the fact that I've had absolutely fantastic advisors and instructors who have been open, willing to help, I don't think if I had continued college years ago that I would have done so well. Um, I was lucky because I was able to do school full time and not have to work. I don't have a family, so I was able to just give it 100%. And as Alex said, he's a little high strung. I'm anal OCD. Um, <laughs> when I need to know something, I go after the answer. Um, I don't think all the students and even the younger ones understand that as much, but I think if we prepare them, we let them know that we're there to help, that don't be afraid to open and you know, ask the question. Don't be afraid to go up to somebody. If somebody is not agreeing with you, okay, everybody has the right to disagree and have their opinions. Find somebody else that you know, may not agree with you, may challenge you, but at least you can find out your information that you need to know. Um, I think I'm passionate about learning. The bug bit me so bad I can't get rid of it. <laughs> All I want to do is be a perpetual student. Um, but I think it's my opportunity, which came because of a bad situation or the fact that the job got outsourced, allowed me to open doors to go and pursue what I wanted to pursue. I always wanted a college degree. I've watched all three of my parents get their college degrees, from my father with his doctorate in law, you know, and my stepmother with her master's, and my mom with her associates. And that's pretty cool when you're the kid and you get to watch all your folks graduate. Well, now it was my turn. And I would have to agree with Alex. Even though I was born in Burlington, Vermont, I wasn't raised here. I grew up in Massachusetts, <laughs> on the Cape, actually. And um, we tend to be a little high strung. But I think <laughs> if you're passionate about what you want to do, what you want to learn, where you want to go, school will open it up. Um, I think I, one of the things I took from CCV experience was I love the younger students. They had so much respect for us older students, and we had respect from them. We got to learn from them as much as they got to learn from us. And I think that is an incredible experience that you, you just don't get anywhere else. And going on to my Johnson degree was similar, but everybody was able to you know, put your best foot forward and you know, go ahead and ask. Next. No, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, the secret I mean, of your success. All right. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, I definitely agree. I mean, you got to be your own advocate to start with. And then you got to find, like they said, you got to find that person. Um, I, the flexibility of CCV being online for me was the key point to my success. I, I couldn't have done it without that. And when I started college, um, my family was a little different. They told me I was nuts and I wasn't going to do it. So that was my drive. I was like, yeah, you just told me that I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and that's actually, I was supposed to get a liberal arts degree, but they had, my family urged me to change because I didn't think I could finish my bachelor's. Um, and with CCV, everything was online, so I never stepped foot on campus except for that first day I enrolled. And then after that, I just was a huge advocate for myself, making sure everything was in place. And then going to Johnson, it was a little bigger. It's a little more difficult when you're all online. You gotta find that right person. And so I took some hybrid courses. And for me, my right person was um, Dr. Virginia Richards. And she just, she loves her EDP students. She loves all her students, whether they're EDP or not. And 
come halfway through one of her courses, she found out that I wasn't on the right course line and I wasn't going to graduate on time. And so that meant I would have to redo one to two semesters of classes because with education degrees, you only have five years. And that would have totally messed up my whole, so she fixed it for me. And without that, I wouldn't be here today. And she's always done that, even when I wasn't in her classes, called me at home, from her home, to make sure I was okay, see what if I needed anything. And it's really about finding that right person who's gonna help you. It might not be, an, I actually don't even have an advisor. <laughs> because I've taken that online route, but I've always been able just to find that teacher who would help me, and I think students need to remember to do that, whether they're young or old, and I recently had a class with traditional college students this last semester, and like she said, it was an amazing experience. We really learned from each other, and we used to joke in class, we were the old people. <laughs> nope. And so we used to have fun with it, but we really, they really, we respected each other and we really learned from each other's experiences. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Nervous bladder. Uh, <laughs> what really helped me out was my VSAT counselors to start off just because they really helped me get into college and prepare for it and basically told me what I should be expecting and how to, I guess, prepare for it again. And of course, Miss Kelly Beckel, which is in the audience right now, when I first got to college, she was my trio counselor, and she helped me out a lot adjusting to college and getting me more prepared and helping me with my room situation and grades and classes and stuff. So she was great. Um, I didn't really have such, well, I had support. My mom and sister both wanted me to go to college, but I didn't really have their support. They didn't really help me out at all in any way whatsoever. But. A couple years into, I'm not even a couple, just a year into college, uh, my mom didn't, wasn't doing so well, so I couldn't live with her for a while, so I was living with someone else and became an independent student, so I got a little less support from that. But I feel like the most successful part of college was really going out, like being one of those people that didn't just sit back and not embrace the college experience and get to know the community better. I got to know some people, I joined a couple clubs, and it's made things a lot better and made the experience much better for me. Thanks. So I'll, to recap some of those highlights, I think that some of the connections you made on campus through organizations, connections with particular faculty or individual staff members who were uh, especially supportive, and then the flexibility in the course design type and, and offerings. Um, obviously, all of you are, as I said before, are successful because you're here. But, um, and, and obviously that means you, you overcame any barriers you, you experienced along the way, but um, I think it would be helpful for all of us to hear maybe what some of those barriers were that you experienced. Alex, you kind of alluded to uh, some folks, not, some staff or faculty not being as helpful with, the, with some of the issues around transition. Um, I mean, Roy, we talked about some of the, the, the challenges. Uh, that you had seen um, over lunch, so maybe we'll, we'll put that to you to start with, and, and, and Alex, and then if, if the others want to jump in, please do. Okay, so some of the experiences, right, being in college, correct? Yes, or just, just, yeah, challenges that, that could have derailed your college experience, but didn't. All right, okay, that sounds good. Okay. Fellow students were my biggest problem. When I first got into Castleton, <laughs> I was in a suite style, so it was like eight of us, and they were all pretty big partiers. They really encouraged it. They made fun of me and poked at me because I don't, I don't drink or anything because it's really bad in my family, alcoholism. So I try my best to stick away from it. But they definitely made it more difficult. But the more I talked about it and embraced them and told them, like, hey, this isn't going to happen, so stop it, they decided to finally quit. And this was like, all right, it's cool. Um, otherwise, I felt like the biggest... The main reason I didn't want to go to college at all was because of the debt. I... In, from a poor, a low-income family, and that is pretty scary to see because I already see how it affects my mom and my, my family as is, so I didn't want to be part of that in the slightest. But coming here and getting some help, of course, really helped me out. I think that's about it for me. Anybody else? Um, so, I guess challenges, this is, a, this is a great institution, I'm glad I came, but there's also been a lot of frustrations here. Um, and I think a lot of the roadblocks that I, I, I hit here, you know, the negative has really, you know, caused me to have some great life skills on tact and managing people and, like, getting after things harder for myself. Um, but 
when like going through the diesel program, you know, like uh, we have some great building blocks here and some great potential. Um, I'll use the diesel program. You know, it was started 12 years ago, and the teacher did a great job getting that started. And you know, uh, the the guy's a nice guy, great guy, um, but it's kind of fizzled off and we haven't really got after it and tried to really build it up and make it a diesel program for the 21st century. Um, that, that frustrates me a lot because I worked with the, our professor in diesel all the time and in some ways honestly felt that, uh, you know, that we like to have Fridays off or we like to not have homework, but when you're at a college paying $24,000 a year, um, I want to be challenged, and I want to feel like at the end of the end of the week, like wow, you know, like this is really getting at me. Um, uh, so, I think that like in some ways, um, if you're going to have a program at a college, you really need to full, uh, fully support it in every single way. Uh, I feel like in some ways the diesel program is underfunded and underappreciated. Um, I. Th it's, it's here in Vermont. I, I'm from Massachusetts and I came here to, I could have gone to like a UTI or a Wyotech, but it's more like a business and it's a degree program and it gets you out in 15 months, but then, then what do you got? Uh, you got that on your resume, but it doesn't show that you put in the effort to do your two years. There's a lot of potential here, but it's, ex it's expensive when, uh, you know, we're the, one of the lowest, uh, what are we, I think we're, 50th for higher ed funding in the country and so it's expensive I feel like I'm, I'm rambling but I just um, I, I, I've loved it here and I've loved the experience but I think a lot of ways I've pushed myself and made the best of it because you only get what you put into it but at the same time I think that the college needs to put a little bit more effort into certain things because um, our generation works on word of mouth and when there's frustration all the time with students, when we go to a lab and it's supposed to be nine hours a week of lab and we show up and nothing is prepared, uh, that's super frustrating uh, to me and I don't want to see the program fail because it's, it's small and it should be small and it shouldn't be this big business because, you know, me and my fellow classmates became a family. Um, but when you have other opportunities to go somewhere else where it's, highly respected and it's got a, a big infrastructure for the 21st century in diesel which I'm not going to get into how that all works but um, I just that was my biggest problem is hitting walls with not getting the right support with different classes and in student council trying to get things done I mean of course it's going to be a lot of work when you're trying to take on projects that's that I'm not I'm not going to say that was going to be easy, but at some points, I wish we had more support. Uh, luckily, I, I seeked out faculty members that were so willing and so helpful to students. They absolutely love students, and the faculty were the best, uh, the, the ones that I found to help out. That was, that was absolutely awesome and backed me with everything that we tried to do. Um, so positive. There's a lot of positive here, but there's a lot of stuff that needs work as well. And I, you know, I think it. I think it can be done. Uh, so I mean, I'm, I don't want to talk too negatively because I love my experience and it's made me who I am. I just, yeah. So thanks. Thanks. Either of the others want to talk about barriers? Yep. I didn't really find any barriers when I was in school. The barrier I found was the federal government. The program that I fell under. When somebody says, pull up a chair, put a pot of coffee on, you're going to be a while doing the paperwork, they mean it. Um, it can be very frustrating. If I didn't persist with it, my education would not have happened. Um, I think it's, I didn't really have a choice if I wanted to go to school. It was either that and I turned down the opportunity and a, and a great opportunity it was and I'd have to go back to work and find a job and be in the workforce and I wouldn't have finished my degree at all. But I think the hurdles are just be persistent and ask the questions and you know I was able to find the right program I wanted, do the right things I wanted to do, pursue my degree in particular areas, but the federal government had its role and they were very frustrating and I can't say enough for my advisor sitting in the audience, Valerie Edwards, who would always give me the confidence, she always helped me out, she helped me out with the feds, um, it was you know it was a long process but I think if you stick with it and you're persistent 
I didn't really have any roadblocks within both my degree plans other than just having to make sure I had all the proper paperwork in. And that's, that's about Thank it. Um, I would say the major barrier I found leaping hurdles um, was communication. Coming from an EDP student, um, the people I talk to are at CCV, but with all the changes in the Johnson Education Program, not everybody was talking to each other, but where it comes in to be a huge barrier for the student is if that one thing's missed, you don't graduate. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an oh well, I mean, it's a hit or miss. And that's happened, I know for myself and a lot of my fellow classmates, is communication is a huge barrier. And still is, going into this next semester, I'm scared because um, my two people I communicate are not gonna be there anymore. So now I don't even know who to talk to. <laughs> but it's, it's always been a huge barrier and if you don't keep asking, then you don't know. But the thing is when you're told something by an advisor or whoever, you think, oh, it's right, okay, I'm good. But if you don't question it multiple times, you could be not getting your degree. So that's been a huge barrier. Thanks. All, all very helpful points, and I think especially as we're talking about the multi-institutionality here, um, the, the value of us talking amongst each other within the system and talking with each other in support of students is going to be all the more critical, particularly around graduation requirements. Um, I want to shift us a little bit, and I do want to leave time for, for audience questions, but I, a lot of focus has been on um, online learning and uh, the, the, the changing expectations around the classroom. I know we had a rich conversation about this at lunch, just in terms of the range of opinions and experiences there. And as Christina mentioned, we think this is the case, that she is the first uh, graduate within the system to complete a degree fully online. And, and she spoke to uh, the value of that flexibility. I know that, that Roy and some of the others have, have uh, actually I think all the others appreciated some element of the in-class experience and, and the value there. So maybe Christina, you want to just touch on your experience a little bit and then whoever wants to jump in. Um, yeah, I did my full two years with CCV online, and with Johnson, I've done everything possible that I can. I do, there's once a week weekend courses that I've had to do for the education degree. Um, but by far, my, I love my online courses. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them, but I felt that we engage even more in an online course than we do in person. The in-person ones were great. We got to bring in our experience from the classroom and everything, and we had a great time. But online, you have the freedom to go and do the work when you want. It's triple the work. It's more work than a regular course. But it was so worth it because if somebody posted something and then I had an experience with it later in the week, we got to have a whole conversation. Now with an on-site course, you've got those few hours, or my on-site courses are like eight hours long. But once you leave that class, you don't get to come back to it. And on online classes, they ran whatever for a week, Tuesday to Monday, whatever the teacher's setup was. But we had the whole week to back up our opinion with research, and to really and people engage more when you're not face to face. And um, ninety percent of the time, I never met the people in my online classes in person, and so I could say whatever I wanted and not <laughs> care what they thought. <laughs> But it really opened it up for shy people. When I started, I was very shy when I started in college. And because of my job, I've been able to open up. But I just really felt I got so much more out of my online courses because I was working in the field while taking my courses. So I got to bring so much more in than if I was an on-site. If I was working in a restaurant, I would not have had the experience to bring in to my education degree that I did being able to do online courses. I guess I'll go next, because I'm like the exact opposite of her. <laughs> I applaud her for being able to do what she did, but I tried that once. Gosh, was that difficult. I am the kind of person, as I already explained, that if I don't have to do it, it's kind of in the back of my head, and I don't really do it to the last second. So that was pretty much my online experience was the last second. We had like a week between like Monday and Sunday to like post something online and put our papers in. I'd be there like Sunday at 11.30 posting things online, making sure I was all set for the week. Last <laughs> second, I just, between working full time and doing part time classes, I just couldn't do that. She, she, she's great for being able to do that. <laughs> I just love, I mean, I guess the flexibility for me having four kids, I was doing my homework with my, I actually had a baby during my fourth baby while I graduated with CC, well, during my CCV course. But I had my infant at home with me while I was going to college. 
So uh, my kid, I'm in my pajamas with my newborn baby doing my online courses. Now, they don't let you bring a baby to class. <laughs> so that was my motivation that I could be home with my four kids doing this. And plus, I did daycare at home at that time because I wanted to stay home with my new baby. So there's 14 kids at my house. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to be home. So that was, that was huge for me. I, I guess, like for my job, we talk about our why. So, I mean, it's your drive, your why of why you want to do it. So that, it was important to me. And so that's why all the extra work was really worth it. Now, I, put, I particularly like the classroom experience because I'm a visual person. However, I've grown to enjoy online classes. I wouldn't say I love them. Um, the first semester I was at CCV, I took my first two classes online and I lucked out and had a great instructor for both who talked me through it because I was like, why am I doing this? I should be working. I sh shouldn't be in school. And I'm never going to get through this. I can't figure this out at all. This is nuts. I couldn't get anything set up. I had two online, two in a classroom. I did not have any children, so I didn't have to worry about that end of it. Um, but online, it does take a lot. No, it's not for everybody. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I've grown to enjoy it. I wouldn't say I love it or I hate it anymore, but it actually did allow me some flexibility to be able to do some other classes, to not have to worry about driving in the lousy weather. Um, and you do, you tend to engage more because it's a full 24, seven day a week thing. And you do get a lot, a lot of discussion. And you never meet half the people you go to school with but I also enjoy the visual part as well, and I think I liked combining both. I don't think I could do what Christine did totally online. I'm too much of an extrovert. Um, I can't just be holed up in my office the whole time. I need to get out and be with people and others, and I think I found a really good niche with being able to do both. Um, I never took an online course, but thinking about it is just, I, no. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, because I'm a very visual and listen. If I can be in class, listen, and just pay attention, I do really well. I'm not a person who can go back to my room and study for two hours for an exam. And I still do well on exams. Studying just doesn't work for me because then I just, I'm a slow reader and I just start to read it. And then my mind drifts and then I'm going to go do something else. So Agreed. that doesn't work for me. Um, and I, I like to be able to go to my teacher, find my teacher. I'm not a, I mean, I do emails all the time. But I like to, when I have a problem, go find it and deal with it. And like the writing center here, I don't know what I would have done without that. <laughs> um, because writing is not my strength. And going through like English classes, if I had to do that online, I would have failed. No, no doubt about it. Agree to Gad. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my strength. I, yeah. can, I can write a paper like, tomorrow. Give me a math problem. Math, forget it. <laughs> well, and then when I could be here, get it assigned, and go straight upstairs into Conant and say, all right, I got to set up a thing, and here's what we're doing. Uh, can you help me with this? That was perfect for me. Um, so thinking about online and managing my time to get online and do all that. and. <laughs> When I have to wake up because I hate being late to things, I just, it's like my reputation thing to like be on time. Um, thinking about that got me out of bed because sometimes there's those mornings you just don't want to get out. So it got, got me to class and got me to actually like get my stuff done. So online wouldn't work for me. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I, I do want to do a quick time check because I've got a couple more questions prepared, but I think I, I want to make sure we leave time for, for folks. So, uh, Annie, how are we doing? Okay, I think we should open it up then uh, because um, I, I expect some of you may have questions you want to mm -hmm. give to the audience. This is another place where I, I date myself with parent, parent panels. I'll refer to being Phil Donahue and bringing the mic around and the parents will get that and no one else does. So, yeah. We've got, Annie is Phil Donahue here. So raise your hand if you've got a question and, uh, and she'll find you. The complete online, how did you find the support, like advising support or if you had issues with the class or if you had issues with the technology? Um, so, well, I did have an advisor at CCV, um, Kathy Rousseau, who I'd go book my classes with. Um, but as far as online, you just, you emailed your teacher. Everything was online. I could email any of my professors at any time. The only problems with technology would be, you know, if it was school-wide. So if it was school-wide, then we had an exception. But if you had your own personal, issue with technology, you're expected to fix it. Like you go to the college and use a computer, you do anything of that. But everything was through email and everything with the professors. I 
I want to call on folks. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Roy. Hey, Linda. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to ask, um, i am sort of been doing an informal survey of my students about what they find to be the most meaningful experience they had in college. And so far, I'm surprised that most students say similar things. But with, especially with um, the second panelist who's done mostly online stuff, I'm interested to hear what she has to say as well. Most meaningful. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I get to do my classes on the beach. Um, I get to. I travel a lot for my current job, and so I get to take. That's been wonderful. I just take it with me because I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. But I'd say, I mean, meaningful wise, each class has been has brought. I bring something out of each class depending whether it's a psychology course or an education course, it, somebody stands out to me in each class and I don't have to meet them in person to be able to make that relationship. I've actually met a lot of my, what I call my second family online. We'd never met in person. My best friend I met online and she's now my second family. So I think people make that mistake where they think you can't have a relationship with somebody online and each class has really just brought a meaningful experiment. It's, experience <laughs> to me just through somebody else I've made a connection in every single one of my classes I wonder if any of you have thoughts about um, we talked a little bit about the changing demographics or at least that the media has kind of gotten a hold of the story of the changing demographics we already knew about it but uh, any thoughts about the ways that you see that maybe impacting the services that we provide to students uh, we talked a little bit about the way it impacts course delivery but as we see more students coming back to school after some types of interruptions or um, other life events, just uh, things that we can be thinking of. Um, I think if you're coming back to school like I did, you want to make sure that you, at, you, know, you ask the questions, find out, talk to the people, do your research. Um, don't be afraid to, to figure things out. Um, as Alex was saying, you know, he you know, he had some great instructors and stuff, and, you know, don't be afraid to pick their brain. Um, you know, just try to find out what you want, where you want to go with it. Um, be your own advocate um, of your own education. Help your instructors, meet them halfway, because they're also there to teach you. They're also there to help you. And um, I think if it's, if you can bring a positive experience to it and be part of your own education and have the help that you can get, I think it will succeed. So I think with like demographic, a lot of the, you know, I come from Massachusetts, like I said, we're kind of in some ways are a little bit more high strung. When I came here, things are a lot slower, I'll be honest. And a lot, a lot of like uh, my friends who are Vermonters, uh, I talk about like some of my ambitions, like going to Germany and like, why would you want to do that? I, I, like, I don't want to leave the farm. Like I, I just barely got to college and that was hard enough, like, like those people, uh, like my friends, and I'm like, well, you gotta get out there and get after things, and so thinking about that, which I love Vermont, and I, I love that it's a, you know, a peaceful place, and I, I think a lot of like, you know, my fellow students wanna stay in Vermont, they don't really like to go outside the box in some ways, and I'm not speaking for all, I'm just speaking for the ones that I was mostly in contact with. Um, I think that you know they want to stay in Vermont. We have to, in some ways, try to get higher funding for education because when you're looking at here for or anywhere in Vermont, when it's tuition-based funded, you're paying a lot for a degree. And like when you take a business degree, you know, the, you can get a business degree pretty much every college in in a lot of ways. Um, this is, I, I love Vermont, and I think we should, you know, keep people here, but cost is a, is a big deal for a lot of the demographics. One, they're, you know, a little bit lower income, or they don't have, like, the experience with college. Um, it makes it hard, so they, a lot of people, you know, leave the state to go find cheaper ways to do education, I think. I don't know. Um, I think having the different ways to take a course, having it online, um, I mean, for me, it was just flexibility being able to work, but then when I think of my oldest son, as he's getting older, um, having Asperger's or the high-functioning autism, going to a class with his social anxiety may not be an option for him. And being able to do a communication course online like I did, you can tape yourself 10 times and nobody knows it. And then you just post it and play it. 
to stand up and talk in front of everybody may not work for him or if he doesn't get along with the teacher because he can be very very flippant and rude he could <laughs> fail a course because he doesn't agree with the teacher or the kids in his class so having the option of taking a course when you have the option to do it either way could really benefit a lot of these other children who have the same anxieties and everything. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, we got two, so we're here and then in the back. Hi, I'd like to know uh, from each of you what you believe uh, you would improve um, in the VSC as a system, not individual colleges, but within the VSC as a system to allow us to move forward and improve the services that we offer to students? I guess I would say, um, in general, I mentioned it before, the communication. And I've been with two colleges now, and it's, it's the same. Um, the communication with the students, having the facts straight, having it well written out. It's not out there for the students what to do. You don't put in that application to graduate, but they don't tell you to do it. You're supposed to just know. <laughs> and if you've never been to college, you don't know. So I would just say communication between staff and with students, it could be a lot more clear for people who are just kind of diving in it on their own. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, um, I would say support. You know, there's a lot of kids who just don't uh, get after it and advocate for themselves. Um, and I don't think they should be spoon-fed because it's college and you need to take care of your own life and you need to do it, but we still need support and my generation runs on word of mouth, and when they actually do step out and try to look for help, if they could be you know, greeted with open arms and really supported and worked with to get that done, you know, that makes a happy, when we talked about a consumer, that makes like a happy customer who is gonna talk about that experience and go you know, talk to his other friend who's even more quiet and go, guy, I talked to him and uh, he really helped me out, so you should go do it. And, I just think that you know support and not do it not do it for us, but I guess just more openness and like step by step like or not step by step, but just more clear on what's expected and how to get there and like more personal stories on how others got there um, and I guess like um when students do something in in the college and eh, they're proud of it the it should be you know, risen up and told to the public of, of the accomplishments of certain students so that students feel really good about their accomplishments and have it be more well known about what they're doing so that it's just not on the campus, it's, it's everywhere. So kids are like, wow, I was in the newspaper for this. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's an improvement. I'd have to agree with both Alex and Christine. Um, communication's really big, um, having Advisors have open door policies. I mean, I know everybody has got families and other you know, obligations and stuff and time limits and everything, but to be able to sit down and talk to your advisor, talk to your instructor, be able to understand from start to finish what's expected of you, um, have it clear cut as Christina was saying, because not everybody is gonna understand that. Some of the younger students don't get it. Um, I'm, you know, <laughs> neither do I. I agree with Alex when it's, you know, some of the younger students that I've talked to and I've gone to school with, you know, they'll say, but how did you do this and how, did you, you know, how do you know that? And because I chose to go find out, and as Alex said, it's word of mouth. You have students and peers and everybody talking to each other, that's how it's gonna come about. And I think if you know, you're proactive in your pursuit of your degree, it will be helpful, but coming from the other aspect of it, you know, we as consumers, so to speak, um, we want to know what's expected of us. Um, it is college. It's time to grow up. I'm going backwards now because I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> um, but I think it's, that's the biggest challenge is making sure that you've got your level of communication out there, that people are willing to listen, that, okay, each student comes at it from it very differently. They come at, you know, my personal experience, I didn't have a financial issue because of my program, but I had a classmate who comes from very low income and you know, they didn't know where to go, or should you file for this FAFSA, or do you need to do this through VSAC? This is what you need to do, and their peers and other classmates would point them in that direction, and I think communication between classmates is really huge too, no matter what college you go to. Um, so I was fortunate in that respect, but um, I think it's what you put into it, um, 
grow up, it's college, you know, you're responsible for your education, but I think it's, you know, each person's going to come at it differently. Each advisor is going to have a different type of student. Some students you can spend five minutes with, others you may have to spend 15 minutes with. Me, I was pretty easy going in and out the door in 15 minutes, and that was the end of that. Sort of kind of knew it. Um, but you may have a student that may not, and I think that is the key, is open door policy and communication. Yeah, I agree with what everyone has said so far, but I also have to say I was lucky with it the same way. I had great advisors, people helped me out a lot, and I could talk to my advisor pretty much whenever I wanted to. She was always, she's a social worker, so it made it really easy. She can talk slowly to me if she needs to. <laughs> but I feel that doing more things like we're doing right now, like having the experience, getting to hear from students, getting to hear our voices and hear our complaints and to know how to do things better, I feel like we're talked to a lot, but we don't get to talk back very often. So being able to do things like this would really help out all the colleges everywhere in the world, so. Thank you. I think um, Alex and maybe one other person on the panel mentioned that when you got to college, a lot of professors assumed that since you were a college student, you would just know certain things automatically. And I'm, I'm wondering what were some of those things that we thought you would know that you didn't know and that you needed to hear from us about? Well, uh, sometimes when you walk into like the administration building, maybe not so much like faculty, um, but sometimes with administration, like going into the financial aid office, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing. And sometimes it's kind of like, I feel like I'm imposing on them and that's not really a happy, like it's not a good feeling to, I just want help. And I'm a person who's just gonna go out and I'm gonna still find the answer, but a lot of my peers, you know, they get met with people going, yeah, like what do you need? Like let's move this along here. Are gonna walk out and not come back and not fill that out and make a financial mistake or um, I guess sometimes like uh, registering for classes wasn't very clear and uh, I think it was expected that, well, what are you doing? Just register or, or j just do it. But that wasn't really explained on how I did that. And sometimes we, there was a due date out and the only ways we heard it was because some students knew already about it, but it wasn't posted anywhere. So I, I guess like um, knowing that we don't, this is, a, we're in college brand new, we don't know everything, especially when it comes to logistics stuff, like the really important about scheduling for classes or how to get it so that I can go online and register for classes and not have to do it paper. Because I didn't know I had to go talk to my advisor to get him to sign a paper and bring it back so that I could be activated online to register for a class. And I was expected to already know that. I guess uh, that's where I'm coming from. Um, I wondered if you could speak to how you chose the school that you went to. Did you look at other schools and what was the decision that made you decide to go where you went? And second part, what was your expectation in earning a degree? Thank you. All right, well, I chose CCV because I went online and I went to see who could give me all online courses. <laughs> And I actually, I had to fight for it. Um, I had to get a communication waiver for my communication class because I'm like, I can't quit my job and come take your course. And also there was, you had to work in a school for a little bit for the early education. I said, I'm already working, I'm already teaching preschool, so I got a waiver for that as well. But that's how I chose CCV. And then there was the opportunity to go EDP with Johnson to finish with my bachelor's. What was the second part of your question? Okay, I bothered with the process because I couldn't get any further in my job. I was earning minimum wage and training people with associates and bachelors so they could make more than me. Sure, I'll go next, I guess. Uh, I went to Castleton State. Uh, I chose that because in, I'm poor, so I had to choose an in-state college because I could not afford an out-state college. But there was only a few colleges in uh, Vermont that had uh, social work in them. So I had to choose one, so it was down to like three or four colleges, and Castleton City College accepted me, so I went there. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. 
Uh, what do I expect? I expect to get a job. I mean, I'm, I expect that, but I'm not really counting on it right now, so. Yeah, I'm going to get an internship. Definitely. I'm telling you, get an internship. My I husband one. didn't. And that was the worst thing you can ever do is get an internship in your senior year because otherwise, you don't, if you don't have the experience background, they don't care about the piece of paper in this line of work. So it's, please get your internship. I don't want the same thing to happen to you. It's, it's <laughs> mandatory, so I have to. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome. Um, the answer to your question is why I chose my colleges. I chose CCV because I worked for a company in New Hampshire and I had some fellow colleagues that had said, hey, we went to CCV, you really ought to check it out. And I had attended Lebanon College years ago and they were not accredited. So I needed to be able to find something where I could bring my credits to CCV and they offered the APL course. And I had a great advisor down in the Upper Valley at the time, which is where I originally started from before I ended up in Montpelier. And I chose CCV to take that APL course specifically, which killed a whole year of school off for me and brought a lot of my credits up from Lebanon College. And I wanted to see if I could pursue my bachelor's program because I kind of wanted to outdo a few folks <laughs> a little bit and prove a point, um, not only to them, but also more so to me that I could actually do this because my grades were terrible in high school. And I chose Johnson State one, because of my APL instructor who suggested it because of you, you had your, you, you weren't glued to a classroom. Even though I'm not a huge online person, you had the flexibility to be able to go and do both online and in a class or in a hybrid. I, took, I actually took two of my Johnson classes here at VTC. I only live just below the college here. Um, so I was able to get a variety of experience from all three different schools. Um, I wouldn't have chose it any other way. Um, they've all offered great, great potential, given me an absolutely fantastic education. And why I pursued my degree was, one, because my job was outsourced. I probably would have still been at the company had they not outsourced it. And two, I personally wanted a degree, and I also wanted to be able to make a better paycheck and, and find a job that I actually want to do in a field that I love. And being a business environmental major, I think I'm hoping to be able to take my corporate experience and put that to work with my degree. Uh, I, I love these questions. Um, so <laughs> I wanted diesel, and that's pretty much all I wanted. Um, I didn't want to be too far away from home, but I didn't, uh, wanted to be far enough away where I could be myself and away from my parents. Um, the, the technician recruiter from Milton Cat recommended it, and I saw it at the, um, our high school college fair. And they told me it was a small diesel program, so I was a little apprehensive. Um, me and my mother, we went, I visited SUNY, I didn't, uh, SUNY Cobaskill, I didn't like it. Um, and then we did an entire weekend, me and my mother, we went to White Mountain, White Mountain Community College. It was absolutely horrendous. Oh, I'm going to be honest, it was awful, and me and my mother tried to stay optimistic when we were touring it. And we didn't say anything to each other until we got here. And then we got here and we're like, wow. So we both turned to each other and we're like, wow, that, place, that last place was awful. Um, <laughs> I, and I was hoping you weren't gonna wanna go there, but luckily you don't. Um, and then I loved it here because I like the country and this, this is a beautiful campus, you can't argue that. Um, and then when I met with uh, admissions, they told me I could have a snowmobile that sent me over the edge. Um, so, uh, it's a, and I actually love that it was a small um, school and that it was a small diesel program because you get to know your teachers here and they know your name. Um, so, yeah, that's why I pursued here. Um, that's pretty much it. This was, this was also the only school that I, ever, that I applied to other than UNOH because I just wanted to go here the day I stepped on the campus. I think we're uh, unfortunately going to have to wrap, and we've got about three or four hands in the air still. So um, what I'd recommend, I mean, I think our, our panelists are going to stick around for a few minutes afterwards if any of you want to approach them individually. And let's give them a round of applause for their efforts. <laughs>